Hi everyone, hope you're well. Welcome back to another session of Network Tech Talk. I'm Derek Johnston, your host. And in this episode, we're covering C-band spectrum. This is the mid-band spectrum ranging from 3.7 to 4.2 uh, gigahertz that was auctioned by the FCC uh, closing in January to the industry for a record-breaking $81 billion. Uh, so today we're looking to unpack C-band. It's relevant to 5G deployments here in the US. Uh, and what some of the technologies are that uh, are going to be used to deliver this uh, valuable spectrum. And to do that, uh, I'm joined by uh, Girish Sundar, my colleague who's an expert in the field. He's been actively leading uh, many of the Samsung technology projects um, that are being brought to market as we speak in, in uh, CBAN. Hey Girish, it's good to see you today. How are you doing? I'm good, Derek. Thanks for having me here. Excellent. Thanks, uh, thanks for, for joining me. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really interested in this topic. Um, you know, as, as we've discussed, this is something that the industry has been, uh, has been covering a lot lately, um, particularly as, as technology starting to be rolled out and, uh, um, tested and, you know, commercial C band, uh, is on the horizon. So really interested to hear, uh, hear what you have to share with us. So I will hand it over to you. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Derek. Um, so let's talk about a little bit of what is C-band, what's its importance, and how is it going to be used in U.S. to uh, deploy 5G on the C-band spectrum. Um, so what is C-band, right? In the context of U.S., uh, or what C-band is basically 3.7 to 4.2 gigahertz of spectrum. Um, again, this is not a new spectrum. This is already in use today. Um, by the satellite TV uh, providers for their broadcast television. Um, over the past couple of years, since the uh, system has gotten better or the capabilities of the satellite TV provider systems have gotten advanced, they're able to pack up all their needs to a smaller chunk of the spectrum. So this basically frees up um, uh, some spectrum on that uh, 3.7 to 4.2 gigahertz for um, wireless operators to deploy 5G. Specifically on the lower part of the spectrum, so um, FCC is uh, determined to re repurpose about 280 megahertz of spectrum from 3.7 to 3.98 gigahertz for um, 5G deployments in the US. Um, now, again, in the rest of the world, the this our mid-band spectrum has been widely used and it's already deployed in some places on for 5G as well. And 3GPP has already defined bands that takes advantage of these mid-band spectrums uh, like N77, N78, and N79 in Asia and Europe. So um, having said that, there's already a ecosystem or generation of devices that's out there that's technically capable of um, utilizing this uh, C-band spectrum when it becomes available and put to use in the uh, United States. Um, how is C-band going to come into existence, right? So it's, FCC has proposed two different phases, clear the spectrum itself, the 280 megahertz that we talked about. Phase one clears about 120 megahertz of spectrum out of which 20 megahertz is going to exist as a guard band and the phase two clears all of the 280 megahertz or close to 300 megahertz of spectrum in which 280 megahertz can be put to use by satellite, uh, sorry, by uh, wireless operators. Now the phase one part where um, 100 megahertz of spectrum can be put to use is um, expected to be available by as, as early as end of this uh, year, around December 5th of 2021 is when operators can turn on and use their respective license that they have got in the uh, in that spectrum. And come 2023, end of 2023, um, they would be able to use up um, the rest of the portions that is uh, on all of the 280 megahertz. You would see that in phase one, there's a 20 megahertz band, which is basically the B1 in the slide that we're talking about. That's going to exist because uh, B2 to C4, there would still be satellite TV operate, uh, companies operating in that frequency, and they would uh, take until 2023 to vacate that. Um, there is a permanent guard band also being um, put in place uh, between this uh, C-band spectrum that is getting freed up, which is the 280 megahertz, and the rest of the C-band spectrum that will be 
uh, used by the satellite UV operator. Now, this auction one of them happened in two phases. Phase one is called the clock phase, wherein um, all of the operators can bid in for the amount of spectrum they would like to uh, own or the generic blocks in which they want to own. And then the phase two was called the assignment phase, where the winners can go and now bid for specific frequencies. Uh, so they get a continuous chunk of spectrum on the lower and the upper part of all A's and stuff like that. Um, in, 20, uh, uh, in 2021, by the end of this year, two of the operators have, uh, have um, gotten the spectrum and they are on, on 5G uh, by as early as December 5th of this year. Um, let's talk about why the C band matter a lot. What is the hype about? Why is there so much attention and so much money being poured into C band, right? So for 5G to offer an experience that is noticeably different or noticeably better, I would say, than 4G, it requires a dedicated wider channel. What I mean by that is in 4G LTE, the maximum deployed channel bandwidth can only be 20 megahertz. Whereas in 5G NR, that goes all the way up 100 or 100 megahertz or even 200. But then in lower bands, we do not have 100 megahertz to deploy. Um, it's available in uh, ultra high frequencies like millimeter wave, but then it comes with the catch where the coverage of uh, millimeter wave is not as great as the um, lower band. So the C band, which is um, supposed to be a mid band spectrum, and it's also a sub six, it's in a prime state in terms of spectrum real estate where it it can take advantage of both capacity, which means it has a wider bandwidth available, as well as the coverage, which has a decent coverage to cover a city uh, in terms of uh, 5G deployment. Um, again, this is a sub-6 uh, spectrum. And one other uh, fact I would like to throw out here is C-band is a TDD band. What it means is it's a time division duplexing um, uh, technology. It uses the same frequency for uplink and downlink, but then it uses the time to duplex it unless your PCS or radar is frequently duplex. So because of this nature of uh, mid-band, which provides a good mix of both capacity and coverage, so much attention and um, use for the spectrum. Um, in fact, I think mid-band is, uh, is the most popular out out band for 5G deployment, not just in US, but all over the world. Um, Having said that, now that we know what is C-band and its potential, I will walk you guys through a few um, products that Samsung has to take advantage of the system that is uh, getting freed up by as uh, earlier as this year. So we have a variety of solutions for different needs. The first in our uh, toolbox is the massive MIMO radio unit. Um, it's a massive MIMO 6040-64R um, um, unit. And uh, we believe that probably this will be the widely deployed solution for C-band for the most case. We also have the micro radio, which is like a small low power product that's uh, essentially for uh, maybe a dense urban deployment like New York cities or downtowns. And it's also used for coverage holes, fillings. Um, and uh, we do have um, uh, two different products for indoor deployments as well. One is called the Link Hub which powers your existing DAS system that gets upgraded to support its own radio for greenfield uh, indoor deployments as well. Last, we also have a product which is ATA power outdoor unit uh, for more of a rural deployment. Um, we think like all of these are a mixture of these products should be able to cover any deployment uh, um, use case that that exists today uh, here. So um, let's uh, dive a little bit deep into and talk about um, why do I why do we think this massive MIMO unit radio um, is the most key and its benefits and how that's going to be the primary deployment solution that uh, we think is going to take out there. Okay. Um, First things that 5G should bring in is the most reliable experience, and like we talked about, I have throughputs as well. And the second challenge that we need to solve is the minimization of installation. The massive MIMO radio unit is basically a radio and an antenna and a box. A radio with antenna snap up, because you don't need to have an um, explicit antenna connection that goes up. 
Um, having said that, massive MIMO radio units also come with a technology called beamform. Just to give you a high level of beamforming means, it's a technique that forces a wireless signal towards a specific receiving device, uh, rather than having the signal just spread across, which would a normal antenna would do. Um, this results in a more direct connection, which is actually a lot more faster and reliable. And this can also uh, have several beams for users at the same time. And uh, the other advantage of this massive MIMO unit is the multi-user. We'll talk more on explaining how this multi-user MIMO helps in increasing the capacity of the spectrum that the operator owns by deploying this product, but that's another key uh, factor to consider um, um, while we choose this massive MIMO as the go-to product for deployment for the most uh, deployment use cases. Here, the next slide um, talks about the benefits of multi-user MIMO, just on a higher level. Um, if you look at the diagram to the left, to the left most, you do see, let's assume that is one user connected to the C-band system, which is of about 100 megahertz of bandwidth. Uh, an operator A has 100 megahertz of bandwidth. Um, with multi-user MIMO enabled, technically the same amount of throughput can be pumped to three different users at the exact same time. If it was not for multi-user MIMO, the amount of throughput experienced on the diagram in the middle, where you have three users um, connected to the same system would be one third. Because of the fact that we have multi-user MIMO, the exact same resources can be used um, at the same time to multiple users to enhance the spectral efficiency of the C-band spectrum. It's not cheap, like uh, it's not, uh, it, it, it's it's a valuable resource and you want to put it to use as much as possible. You need to get as much out of it. So on an app, well, theoretically we could actually quadruple um, the amount of throughput that can be pumped out of this uh, system, but on an average, we believe that it's going to be about three times uh, the spectral efficiency that you'll get um, out of uh, a regular system versus a massive mining system. These are the key driving benefits um, to deploy a massive MIMO uh, unit, especially with this mid-band spectrum, with this, which is a prime real estate in terms of uh, spectrum. Now, um, we did talk about uh, how C-band was born because it's uh, um, sharing the spectrum with um, the satellite TV. There are obviously a lot of Earth stations and otherwise called as DISH that sits, uh, has been deployed all over the US. Since they're gonna, we have to coexist, we would have to make sure that um, we have some way of getting the interference or predicting and uh, even avoiding or resolving this issue if that has occurred. Samsung has our uh, proprietary Earth Station Protection Solution, which is um, um, AI-based uh, location analysis. It has a 3D map analysis tool using the rate tracing technology that we have. Um, so it can accurately predict where the Earth Station is, also predict the amount of interference that it can cause. And if we end up having um, uh, interfering with those um, Earth Station units, we have a mechanism to resolve it uh, as well. The other challenge that we need to overcome for C-band is uh, because it's a TDD band, time duration duplex, it's prone to something called as a remote interference. We have deployed um, LTE and NR over C-bands for close to a decade now. So something has enough experience in um, in, um, in deploying um, or solving remote interference per se. So we have our proprietary solution, which is called uh, TDD Remote Interference Manager. Um, it's a centralized tool. It uh, sits in the middle. We have our own proprietary algorithm that punches data across the network and comes up with uh, um, a mechanism to optimize the RAN configuration uh, to have a more optimal spectral efficiency as well. Um, so these are um, another additional tools that we have, which will help us to um, uh, deploy or accelerate the deployment on, on 5G on the C-band spectrum. Um, let's talk about our experience in uh, deploying 5G on the uh, mid-band, right? So we have deployed close to 180,000 um, uh, sites uh, on 3.5 gigahertz. All of them are MIMO radio units in Korea, which is covering about 13 million. In the US, 
also deployed massive memory radio units for 2.5 gigahertz spectrum, CBRS spectrum for various operators. So we have a very proven um, MIMO technology that is operational in commercial network today. And we also have a very solid understanding of the characteristics of the mid-band spectrum. It's extremely key and crucial um, to understand for to accelerate the deployment of uh, 5G on the C-band spectrum. Um, with this vast experience, um, again, of, of deploying 5G over mid-band, Samsung is well positioned to help US operators deploy 5G um, over C-band. Um, not to mention that uh, Samsung's fully virtualized 5G RAM solution um, uh, and the C-band massive memory unit is a very powerful combination, enabling mobile operators to add the flexibility and scalability, which typically comes with the virtualized RAM, um, and also the resource efficiency that this massive MIMO unit brings in, both together is going to be a fantastic solution back to the five G deployment. Um, that's uh, that's all I had, uh, Derek. Thank you. Back to you. Excellent. Thanks, Kirish. That was uh, that was really insightful. I really appreciate your your time and, and participation today. And uh, yeah, it was really I learned a lot. I liked um, particularly the portion on on. Uh, multi-user MIMO and how that technology is going to be key in delivering uh, the 5G experience that people you know, are, are coming to expect, as well as um, delivering to the network operator that spectral efficiency that they so vitally need with this uh, extremely expensive and valuable spectrum. So thanks again for being here. This is mine, Derek, anytime. Thanks. Uh, and thank you all for, uh, for those viewing, uh, for joining us today on Network Tech Talks. Uh, Keep, uh, keep an eye out for our next episode uh, or check us out on our website or on any of our social media channels, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, or uh, YouTube uh, for more information and content about um, our uh, massive limo and other solutions. So thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you.